Welcome to the PDGA Rules School. I'm Brian Earhart, here to help you learn the basics of the official rules of disc golf. Welcome, Welcome to, to Rules School. School. Episode four, taking a stance. In the last episode, we learned that every shot in disc golf is made from a lie, whether that's the tee pad at the beginning of the hole or the notebook paper sized area behind your disc or marker on the fairway. In order to throw, you need to take a stance, which just means you need to position your body to make the throw. Whether or not the stance you take is legal depends on where your supporting points are. The concept of a supporting point is important throughout the rules of disc golf. A supporting point is any part of your body that is in contact with the ground, playing surface, or any other object that is capable of providing support at the time of release. Your feet are your most common supporting points when they're on the ground, but you can also use a knee, your hand, or you can even sit on the ground. It doesn't matter if your foot is holding your entire body weight or just a tiny fraction of it. If it's in contact with the playing surface at the point you release your disc, it is considered a supporting point. On the tee, the rules require that we take a stance that includes at least one supporting point that is in contact with the lie and no supporting point that is outside the teeing area at the moment of release. The rule is written to allow players to run up to the tee shot and follow through past the teeing area after releasing the disc and only requires that the stance conforms at the moment of release. The rules change slightly when throwing from a lie behind a marker disc. Here, the area of the lie is only about the size of a piece of notebook paper. And while you still need to have at least one supporting point in contact with the lie, you are allowed to have your other foot or another supporting point of contact outside the lie. The one limitation is that it can't be any closer to the target than the rear edge of the marker disc. Again, it may be possible to take a run up to throw your shot, but with a target area much smaller than the tee pad, it can be more difficult to make sure that your foot is in contact with a marked lie. If a member of your group doesn't believe that you are making contact with the lie at the moment of release, they can call a stance violation. And if seconded by another member of the group, your throw will still count, but you'll receive one penalty throw, which is added to your score for that hole. Oftentimes, it is better to play your lie from a standstill. This can ensure that the stance is legal and allows for a lot of variety and flexibility in your stance that may be useful in creating a throwing lane. You are allowed to move casual obstacles like stones, leaves, twigs, unconnected branches, or any item designated by the TD if they are partially or completely on the lie or in the stance area. But the rules require to choose the stance that results in the least movement of any obstacle that is a permanent part of the course, like connected tree limbs or park equipment. Once a stance is taken, you can't move an obstacle in order to make room for your throwing motion, although it is okay if your throwing motion causes an incidental movement of the obstacle. Later on in this series, we'll cover how to take relief from obstacles that prevent a legal stance and how the putting area changes the rules a bit more. For more information on stance, including more specific examples, visit pdga.com rules.